Hello, classmates. Today, we begin to study trade protection theory. It includes infant industry protection theory, foreign trade multiplier theory, strategic trade protection theory. We will study them one by one. In this lecture, we will focus on the following three issues. First, background for infant industry protection theory. Second, different stages of economic development and their trade policy. Third, comments on infant industry protection theory. First, Background for Infant Industry Protection Theory. The infant industry argument is one of the most famous arguments for protection against free trade. The argument claims that protection is justified for new industries, especially in less developed countries in order to establish them sufficiently. These infant industries are unable to compete with the old and well-established industries located mostly in developed countries. The main reasons are differences in efficiency in productions, information, knowledge, and the capital endowment. But given time to grow and mature, the industry will be able to compete in the future. Since Friedrich List had developed this argument at the beginning of the 19th century, infant industry protection has been immersely criticized among economics. Most economists agreed to some reasonable circumstances that would justify the temporary and limited protection of an infant industry. Nevertheless, there is a big community of opponents who claim that protection is likely to be only the second best policy, not than the first best policy. Despite this opposition, almost all countries of the world have developed their industrial base by applying infant industry protection. Friedrich List was a critic of economic theory. He was an American citizen, a German patriot, and a universalist who believed in the ultimate harmony of national interests. His famous work, The National System of Political Economy, was written to oppose the free trade doctrines of classical economics. After the first industrial revolution, List developed the infant industrial argument to react to the divergence of the industrial development between Great Britain, the main European countries, and the United States. At this time, Great Britain was more developed than those other countries, largely due to the fact that industrial revolution took place mainly in that country. List argued that Adam Smith's universal theory of international trade will be mainly influenced by the perspective of Great Britain. He argued countries like Great Britain, who 
used protectionist policy, then later try to insist on pure free trade. We are kicking away the ladder for poorer countries. Least considered that a world of free trade cannot be achieved instantly. Due to the divergence of the industrial development of the nations. Acceptance of global free trade would unduly favor the industrialized countries like Great Britain in the 19th century and in the United States nowadays. To enable the infant industries of developing countries to catch up, they had to be protected. After this stage of development, the recently developed nations should slowly reduce protection to be more engaged in free trade with the rest of the world. Second, different stages of economic development and their trade policy. This examined the different stages of economic development through which countries naturally pass. These stages are described as one, the salvage stage, two, the pastoral stage, three, the agricultural stage, four, the agricultural unit with the manufacturing stage, and five, the agricultural manufacturing and the commercial stage. According to the list, every country should start with free trade to develop a strong agricultural industry. They should export raw materials and import manufacturers. But to develop further, countries must industrialize. That is, go from the agricultural stage three to the agricultural unit with the manufacturing stage four, and later to the agricultural manufacturing and the commercial stage five. List assumed that such developments cannot emerge automatically through the natural causes of things, that is, through market forces. Therefore, infant industry protection becomes a necessity for countries, which are the stage four, to be enabled for the competition with more developed countries. NIST examined the following pattern to protect the domestic infant industry. First, import duties and quotas are opportunities to support domestic industrialization to show that these are not the only method. NIST referred to a lot of other policies, such as industrial financial and education policies as an obligation for promoting the domestic industry. Furthermore, this highlighted the development of the agricultural sector as a requirement for successful industrial development. Second, this recommended that protection of manufacturing products would be on a selective and a discriminatory rather than a universal basis. List clearly stated, but it is not necessary that all branches of industry be equally protected. And manufacturer has a hundred of times more opportunity for developing his mind than the agriculturalist. In order to qualify himself from conducting his business, 
he must become acquainted with the foreign men and the foreign countries. In order to establish that business, he must make unusual efforts. From this point of view, the manufacturing industry is the engine of growth. Third, to support further industrialization on a higher stage, protection should only be temporary because further growth would be hardly possible without international trade. In addition, the level of protection should not be too high to stop imports at all. Because even infant industries need a slight competition to be more efficient and therefore successful, especially in the long run. The infant industry really holds that once the emerging industry is stable enough to compete internationally, any protective measures induced such as tariff are intended to be removed. Fourth, the intensity of protection cannot be concluded by using any theory, even this theory. There is no general rule which countries can apply because the situation of every country is different, especially in the context of its trading partner. List stated that not all countries have the opportunity for industrialization. He supported his notion by giving some recommendations on minimum conditions for the success of infant industry protection and the level of duties. In addition, he suggested that certain protection are not favorable for the domestic industry because the producers and the investors need to know the scale of protection duty in advance to have enough time to react. Fifth, there should be no duty on importing raw materials or intermediate goods. List gave an example of cotton yarn to show the disadvantage of an imported duty on such products. Third, comments on infant industry protection theory. The infant industrial argument seems highly plausible. And in fact, it has been persuasive to many governments. Yet, economists have pointed out many pitfalls in the argument suggesting that they must be used cautiously. First, once a protective tariff is imposed, it is difficult to remove. Even after industrial maturity has been achieved, special interest groups can often convince policy makers that further protection is justified. Second, it is difficult to determine which industries will be capable of realizing competitive advantage potential and thus merit protection. It may encourage firms to be inefficient from the start. If a developing industry has an effective protection from competition, it may lack the competitive pressures to be efficient and be ready to compete. The protection can create a complacent feeling, which means firms are not ready when protection measures are reduced. 
And once the various protections were imposed, it may be difficult to remove them. Third, there may be other ways of insulating a developing industry from cut slow the competition, not then adopt a protective tariff. The government could grant a subsidy to the industry. A subsidy has the advantage of not distorting domestic consumption and the relative prices. Its job is that instead of generating revenue, as an import tariff does, a subsidy spends revenue. In practice, there are many examples of infant industry protection. The tariff given to protect Harley Davidson microcycle in the United States during in the 1980s appears to have been successful because Harley Davidson survived and has become very profitable. For computers in Brazil, the bans on import during the 1980s was not successful because the industry was never be able to learn enough from the world leaders to reach the same level of efficiency and the competitive prices. But anyway, infant industrial protection is one of the more commonly accepted cases for protection. That's all for this lecture. Thanks for joining. See you next time.